everyone, and welcome to John and Mandy Go RV. We're in Mystic, Connecticut. Hello everyone, and welcome back to John and Mandy Go RVing. In this episode, our adventures take us to the historic village of Mystic, which is situated on the southern coast of Connecticut. Mystic was a significant seaport for over 135 years. More than 600 ships were built here, starting as far back as 1784. Today, Mystic has one of the largest maritime museums in the United States, with a number of preserved sailing ships available to explore, including the whaling ship known as the Charles W. Morgan, which is the world's oldest surviving wooden whaling ship from the 19th century. So come join us as we visit the Mystic Seaport Museum and other destinations in this quaint little village. So now we're going over to check out the Mystic Seaport Museum. It's uh, outside and inside. I would say it's probably the top attraction here when you come to visit Mystic. The Mystic Seaport and Museum was established in 1929. This is the Thompson Exhibition Building at the north entrance. It contains one of seven formal galleries on this 19-acre property, which also includes a 19th century coastal village, museums, and research centers. This is the Aloha Meeting House. It was built in 1851 and served as the Baptist Church in Greenmanville. It was moved here sometime around 1955. Now we're going to check out the Sailor Made Folk Art of the Sea and see what they have in here. What do you think so far? This is kind of cool. Much better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking old buildings and all that too, but only a couple of buildings in and I'm already impressed. How about you? Yeah, I'm enjoying this. But you wouldn't think of sailors as artists, you know? And that's what this is showing. They yeah. really had some. You know, their skills on the ship really translated into some some, some pretty artwork. cool artwork, yeah. I mean, just these canes alone. Uh-huh. Little tiny hands. All this that they did here. Our Zachary Taylor. We all remember you remember Zachary Taylor and his fort down in Key West, right? There he is again. <laughs> that cane's pretty wild. The ship figureheads. I like this one right here.
Scrimshaw, the Whaler's Art. We just got done looking at some Scrimshaw in the last building we were in. Some more Scrimshaw. Before you is a replica of the iconic Amistad, which was built in the Mystic Seaport Museum shipyard and launched in 2000. says the Charles W. Morgan. The Charles W. Morgan is a whaling ship that was built in 1841 and made most of its 37 voyages from the ship's home port in New Bedford, Massachusetts. This type of ship was used to harvest the blubber of whales for whale oil. The Charles W. Morgan's crew averaged 33 men per voyage, with most voyages taking place in the South Atlantic and Indian Oceans surviving ice and snowstorms on many occasions. The Charles W. Morgan is the world's oldest surviving non-wrecked merchant vessel and the oldest surviving wooden whaling ship from the 19th century American merchant fleet. Since the 1940s, the Charles W. Morgan has served as a museum ship and is now an exhibit here at the Mystic Seaport Museum. The Morgan was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1966. This boat was built in 1938 and uh, uh, it served for New York City's New York City Fireboat and it served the city from 1938 all the way to 2010, an enormously long lifespan for a ship. And, uh, oh. And during that time, it fought three major fires, okay? One during World War II in the middle of the 40s. There was a dock fire in Brooklyn. And then it fought a, a ship collision fire underneath the Verrazano Bridge in, I believe it was in 1971. And then subsequently, it provided water to the fire trucks during 9-11. Wow. And oh, okay. it brought the ship to, the, to uh, the Battery Park, if you know where that mm -hmm. is, in Lower Manhattan. And, and, and let out uh, hoses. And that's what you see in these barrels. You see those big barrels? Yeah. Okay, we have hoses, you know. Um, and so they would tie them to the fire trucks, you know. And, uh, and then we have uh, eight cannons on board, eight water cannons on board, and, uh, uh, and we can shoot approximately 20,000 gallons a minute um, over 750 feet. You know, so, I never thought know. ships were used for fires. It yeah, just never occurred boat. to me. Yeah. That's kind of cool. And, uh, and um, so this ship would have been docked, in, in, in over its years, it, it was docked at different places in, in the New York Harbor, but then it acted just like a firehouse. You know, you had firemen living on board, except they'd also have engineers living on board as well. And then, and uh, and they'd have a shift just like firemen do in a firehouse. Oh, know? okay. So it would work just the same way. You know? Nice. You know? And uh, so what we're going to do is let's go down, we're going to go down, I'll show you the engine room and everything, then we'll go up and look at the wheelhouse and then we'll look at the cannon and all this stuff. Okay. okay. i got some great video footage of you, we just watch your operator cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Can I aim it at him? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, here, this is the brass room and, uh, and this is, they have all kinds of different fittings. You know that they, they use for different uh, things, but everything operated by water. And uh, for example, this is a saw, you know, and but it operates with water. Those are jackhammers behind you. They operate the water water jackhammers you know, okay. and all and uh, um, and all. And uh, and then they had things like you see that thing with multiple, you know, uh, um, you know this crazy thing. And you can actually put that onto a hose and put it underneath the dock, and then it would just spray all over the place. So you. Could, I'll put out a fire that was on the top. Wow. Okay, so we're going to go down now and look at the living quarters, okay? So in 2010, when New York City stopped using this, they eventually went to a nonprofit, okay? And the nonprofit runs this ship. This is actually, and it's a national landmark, marine landmark, and and uh, the ship is its own museum. We're actually separate from the seaport. Uh-huh. Okay. In the past, they've been on Long Island, and they brought it here now, okay? And, 
So that's what we're, we're, we're doing. And the man in charge is right there. Gotcha. Okay, and, and Pink, you know, and the people that almost everybody else that volunteers, including me, we just volunteer our time on this. Nice. Just come this way, okay? Well, thanks for volunteering. So, this is uh, the valve where water comes in, okay? All right, so they'd open this up and then they see water. They see water it pulls it right in, from the pulls it right up, yeah. And then, um, um, and then the vet, and then the water goes through these gigantic pipes, you know, to the different cannons. Wow. Okay. So be very careful going this way. So the, the, this, we're now in the engine room. Okay, watch out for this, this guy. This is the, the killer right here. Right there. Watch out for that. And then there's this red valve down the Okay, so. So this is actually a, an electric, a diesel electric ship. Okay, what you see here is, is two 1500 horsepower diesel engines. They have the same vintage as submarines, okay, and uh, back in World War II. And those would, would power those six generators that you see in the back, those mm -hmm. electric generators. They would generate the electricity that runs this boat. And then in the way back, you see those round things back there? The big round things, those are the actual propulsion engines. Wow. Connected to the propeller, so it's an electric boat. Then up here, here, these are the electric motors for four huge pumps that actually wow. pump the water. Each one pumps at about 5,000 gallons a minute. Okay, that's how this all sort of works. Wow. It's electric, so come this way, we'll go back here. And this is uh, your, your diesel engines powering these six uh, electric generators you know, on, the one, like, on each side. And then that powers these two gigantic electric motors. Oh my. Okay, and, this, and, they, and they're connected to the propellers. Okay, the propulsion they call it, but nonetheless. Okay, so come on up here, we'll go where the engineers sit. Okay, we're staying. Okay, so this is where the engineers would be when the ship was running. Okay. okay, they'd be controlling the pressure back there, right where you are, is a pressure gauge to control. Okay, and uh, and then here's your control panel. From the from the wheelhouse, they would tell them, you know, that's one engine, that's the other engine, you want to go forward, back, reverse, whatever. Wow. Okay, and then that's an electric panel over there, it looks like out of a Frankenstein movie. Yeah, it does. Okay, it does. Yeah, <laughs> and, and all, and, uh, and then current, this is it all DC, DC current. We have a telephone. You can you see that telephone? You can telephone up to the to the wheelhouse, you know, that way and communicate with them. But when the when the motors are on and uh, and the ship is you know pumping water, it's extremely noisy in here. I love that. You know, and uh, you can always smell the ripe smell of diesel fuel. We have like nine thousand gallons of diesel fuel on board, and so wow. You know, when the ship is going, you can smell it. You know. So this is the uh, wheelhouse. And um, what you see is, you know, obviously we have our wheel, and uh, and uh, and then here's how the, the captain would be communicating. You know, remember you saw the phone downstairs? Uh -huh. Yeah. So you have the phone here, and then and then this is how they would communicate to, you know, to engineers forward, reverse, or whatever they want to go, and uh, and all. And so uh, almost everything in here is vintage, but we do have more modern equipment, you know, to to sell. This is this boat actually operates. Does it? Do you take it out? It's going to Boston the first week of June. Oh, okay. It's going there. It's, well, it's, there's a um, fire safety convention. Oh. Okay. So it's going to go there. And, uh, and then this is one of our cannons here that's being polished. Okay. It's like a never-ending job. Yeah, I was going to say that's all you guys are doing. So how many, so how many man crew does it take to run this then? Well, you know, it, it really is depends on what's going on in the engine room. You know what I mean? And uh, you really only need like one person up here. But the... Uh, so I think right now they're talking ten, okay, six to ten people operating this, you know, and I'll, and as I said, it's all a function of what goes on downstairs. You need a, a captain. I think the Coast Guard requires. I think the Coast Guard requires a captain, a paid captain, and a paid first mate. Huh. Okay, and then no one else has to be. And then and then in, on this ship we have to find volunteers that that have engine experience. That and they're also licensed, you know. Oh, okay. So it's not an easy no, thing to do. So, so. Yeah. Still using the same old guys, many of which were worked on this ship at one time in the past. You wow. Know? And um, and also, it's not an easy thing to operate. At least they're familiar with the ship then, if they worked yeah, on yeah. it in the past. Yeah. So, yeah. so come on out and we'll look at one of these cannons, so you get sort of a better look. You know? Okay. And also, come this way.
So this is the on-off valve, okay? And then these are used to, to make it turn, you know? So why don't you help me out? Can you help me? Well, I can that? try. Okay, so they turn this. I want to straighten this, this camera now. So first, go to the back, okay? And right there and, and turn that, okay? Which one? I don't know, just one way or the other. Okay. Oh, my God. The other way. The other way. Okay, yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep turning. Once you start, just keep going. That's it. You got it. Keep going. That's it. Put some muscle in it. Yeah, come on. That's it. Pretty hard, huh? Okay. It's very hard. Right. Now go to the back. Okay. And turn the other wheel. So we're going to raise the cannon up. Okay. That's it. That's okay. it. Keep going. Keep going. All right. That's great. For children, the museum offers many opportunities for hands-on instruction, art classes, a children's museum, and a few outside play areas. The Tawarki Planetarium features daily shows. Check at the entrance for details. This planetarium is an extra $8 a person if you want to watch the half hour show. Just a heads up. At the beginning of the village in the north side, you'll find a tavern called Schaefer's Spouter. The recreated fishing village is like a step back in time. It has demonstrations and guides all year round. In order to print something, you first have to make it. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to hire people to go on a whaling voyage, okay. and you wanted this made. You'd have to write this manually by hand, and you'd have to tell us what font you wanted, what size you wanted, and then we would take it, and we would start to make it. And in order to do that, we would have to pull these. These are called sorts. So every letter, every number, every space, even the punctuation, they're all sorts, and they live in cases like this one. And you pull them out one at a time, and you build line by line what your print job is going to be. So for each line that's here, it's all made up of individual letters and spaces. I don't oh, think there wow. are any numbers in here. Maybe wow. down here there's a number. Now, backwards is really challenging. Yeah. Okay, we know what word that is, right? Mm -hmm. What word is that? Rules. Rules, right? How do you spell rules? R-U-L-E-S. Right. Mm -hmm. Now spell it backwards. <laughs> S-E-L-U-R is really difficult. S-E-L-U-R. It doesn't mean anything to us. Yeah. Your brain can't translate it. Yeah. So instead of trying to do each line backwards, we do it upside down. If I do it upside down, I can start with the first letter. Um, R-U-L-E-S. Oh yes, rules. Even uh, upside down, my brain can translate that. Right. And then if I flip it over, it's, backwards. it's right side up and backwards. Right side. Hmm. So that's how we do each line, upside down and then backwards. And we do that line by line. Something like this took an experienced type center. Someone who's been doing this for at least two years, mm -hmm. 45 minutes. Yeah, easily. Okay. But it came from eight different cases. Because each time you see a change in the font, that comes from a different case. So there's about eight cases worth in this one job. Oh, so it's see. not just enough to pull it. It's Five knowing minutes. which case am I going to next. And then if you had two jobs going on at the same time, you wouldn't be able to use the same case. You could. You could. You could. But then you're more likely to run into a really awful problem. You reach into your case to get an E, no and there aren't any more. Yeah. You're out of sorts. Yeah. And that gets you pretty upset. Because no like you weren't paid by the hour. You were paid based on what you got done. Yeah. Uh, and if you're out of sorts, you have to stop what you're doing. You have to take a whole box of font and load the entire case. I can't reach in and grab one E. Right. I have to load the entire one. And since I'm paid only for what I'm doing here, I'm not getting paid to do that. Yeah. So that makes me a little upset. So okay. whether it was then or now, out of sorts is not good. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's where that term came from, out of sorts. Out of sorts. You're yeah, out, of sorts. out of sorts. Printers were very proud of their work and they let everybody know it. And that's why there are quite a few phrases that you're very familiar with, but probably didn't realize they came from a print shop. Oh, wow. So I'm going to make an impression. Oh. 
This is a blank piece of paper. We can all agree on that, right? right? Mm -hmm. Nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> I'm going to load this paper here into my make. Ready? And I'm going to take some ink with my brayer, roll it, and then transfer that ink onto my typeset. So every single one of those letters, numbers, or spaces is all locked up here right now. Right. Now, I am going to put the paper to bed so you can say goodnight. Good night. <laughs> Putting the paper to bed means I'm rolling the bed underneath the platen. It's also the symbol that we are not doing any more typesetting. So whether it's right or wrong, it's getting printed. Wow. Now, as I pull on the tail, the platen is going to push down. It's going to squish. And it's going to deliver between 800 and 1,000 pounds of pressure. Wow. <laughs> And then, my friends, we get our finished impression. Hey, look at that. <laughs> nice. Now, if you look at the back, you understand why we call them impressions. Oh, yeah. Because the typeset yeah. is going to press into the paper. Mm -hmm. That's how you can tell that something was hand set and printed on a letterpress. Mm -hmm. And in the end, the printer only wants to make a good impression. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here till Thursday, try the meal. <laughs> And that's how you do it, that's one so cool. at a time. Wow. You can't make multiples with this. My best is around 25 to 30 seconds to make a single one, which is not bad. Okay. They all have to be made one at a time. So if someone so, wanted 100 of these printed up, it's... You're doing it 100 times. Yeah. Absolutely. So out of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. Putting the paper to bed. We yeah. know these expressions, yeah. but we may not have known they came from the print shop. Wow. Hmm. So let's talk about another one that came from the print shop. When you're locking this up, okay, there is no bottom to this. Wow, okay. It's just a friction fit that's being held with these wedges, oh, okay? okay? These wedges are called coins, not spelled the way that your pocket changes. It's coin with a Q. It comes from the French word for wedge. Mm. They look like this. So when you're locking it up, essentially you are coining your phrase. Oh, <laughs> that's where that's that comes cool. from. That's so cool. That cool. So the California job case, which is this one right here, uh -huh. this was used into the 20th century. It was the last version of the case that was made. Um, this kind of printing, movable type, was right. in use till about 1985. The Washington Post was the last newspaper to continue having some of it set by hand. Wow. It was a union job. Okay. So they kept that going. Keep going. The new stuff, the pertinent stuff, that was all being used with linotype at the time. And then when computers came, it was all, it was all computer. Yeah. So that's how the case was towards the end. But wow. earlier than that, it wasn't as convenient as this. I mean, here we've got all our capital letters here. Everything else is right here. One case. They had two cases. Like this. This was the most laid on the roller capital So. One of our more famous founding fathers used to work in a print shop. Same guy that liked to fly kites at lightning storms? Yeah. <laughs> so Ben Franklin would operate a case system like this. Everything he used most often was kept right in front of him. So all the little letters, the numbers, the spaces, all the punctuation right here. Capital letters are not used quite so often. They were kept here. Right? When would you print anything in all capitals? I know what you're thinking. Someone. You wanted to send someone an angry text. <laughs> yes. oh. <laughs> Franklin wasn't that kind of guy. <laughs> so your capital letters were kept in the uppercase and your little letters were kept in the lowercase. That's why we call them uppercase letters and lowercase letters. There's a very old fire engine. Very old. Check out that tricycle. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> and how would you even get up on that two wheel bike? There's, a, uh, there's, there's spokes, on isn't it? Yeah. Okay. The Mystic Seaport Lighthouse was constructed in 1966, but has never been used as a navigational aid. Inside are a few seats and features two short films about the history of lighthouses in the United States. The Henry B. DuPont Preservation Shipyard is a working shipyard 
that repairs, restores, and builds all sorts of watercraft. It was a great afternoon at the museum. Now, let's jump in the car and check out downtown Mystic. Mystic Pizza has been serving slices since 1973 and became the setting of that iconic 1988 movie, Mystic Pizza. We just had to go in and have a slice. So we're here at Mystic Pizza and we got a pizza. Pizza. How is it? Good. Tastes good? Mm hmm. I don't like Pizza Hut. <laughs> Next door, we found a brewery set in an old bank building called Bank and Bridge. It is a laid-back bar that is family-friendly, including the canines. Dogs are welcome on the outside seating area. What did you get, on? PB and J Porter. You got a PB and J Porter? Yeah. Yeah. And I got a flight here with Lucas, Mystic, Joker, and Nana. We are ending our day in Mystic at Sift a highly recommended bakery that features specialty coffees, artisan breads, and desserts. Four-way brownies. So we just got back from Mystic. We can't wait to eat our desserts. We sample them. They are pretty. Can you get that side? Yep. All right. So this is John's blue violet cheesecake. Blueberry violet. Blueberry cheesecake. violet cheesecake. And this is my chocolate milk chocolate hazelnut. I think it's a cake. Yeah. So it's very pretty. Almost too pretty to eat. So we're gonna Almost too pretty. give them a taste <laughs> test here. I'll let you go first. Ooh. Mmm. John's never had cheesecake before, right? I've had it before, but only like once. And this is pretty good. Oh, it's not a cake. It's be a mousse of some sort. <laughs> I already made a mess of it. Mm. Good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to sample mine now? Yeah, you want to take a little bit of mine? Yeah. I'm not a huge cheesecake fan. Pretty good. All right, let's try yours. Not bad. Do you like hazelnut? Some people don't like hazelnut. Not a fan of hazelnut, but it's doing good here. Hitting a spot. So this was from Sift in Mystic. Yes. Yeah, definitely stop by Sift there in Mystic. You will be satisfied with whatever you get there. I'm pretty sure. I have a croissant from the morning for breakfast. Yeah. And I have this for breakfast oh, too, so I don't finish it tonight. There's something real crunchy in the middle there. <laughs> Give us one more bite at least. Yeah, I don't think I could eat this all in one sitting. Mm. 
magnifique. New box kitty. the one with the bad dad jokes. What do you think, Mitch T? Yeah, I'm, I'm, my mom didn't die. <laughs> 